Welcome to the Business Extra. I'm Mustafa Al Rawi, the National's Assistant Editor in Chief in Abu Dhabi. Today, we're going to be talking about the influence of art and culture on the business and investment landscape. We'll be talking to Christie's Middle East Deputy Chairman, Dr. Rida Mumni. We'll do that in a moment. First, if you like this show, please do subscribe. If you're on YouTube, ring that bell. Well, as I mentioned earlier, joining us is Dr. Rida Mumni. Christie's Middle East Deputy Chairman. Hi, Rida. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very happy to be with you today. So I did mention that this discussion is about the influence of art and culture on the, on the region's business and commercial landscape. But before we get into that, would you mind talking a little bit about that beautiful painting behind you? It's, of course, a Lowry master, masterpiece, Going to the Match. Today is the opening of uh, an exhibition on um, the display of many artworks, highlights that are coming to sell uh, next October and November in London. And um, here we have an amazing painting, a very rare painting to be displayed uh, um, here in Dubai. It's a painting by uh, Lowry, going to match, uh, painted in 1953. Uh, we have it because it is very important for us to send to our Dubai office and galleries highlights of ourselves in London that shows also the importance of this office and the importance of our office, not only in Dubai, but also in the region. And this painting of Laurie is one of his masterpieces, probably one of the most known painting he, he, he painted in 1953. It's beautiful representation of England in 1953, showing the post-industrial world here on the right and showing in the foreground this crowd really painted with a beautiful composition and beautiful lines that creates an amazing dynamic to this artwork. And on the left, you have uh, this football stadium and it was still existing in the, um, in, the 20, uh, in the middle of the 20th century, showing this crowd going and advancing toward uh, the stadium. This, um, this piece is really beautiful. It shows a little bit also uh, a human a humanity also of this England uh, in this post-industrial era, and it's absolutely stunning to have it here um, in um, in um, in Dubai. Uh, not only, as I said, because we want to show also the most beautiful artworks coming from London or New York to Dubai to show also the importance of this region, but also, as you can imagine, uh, this painting echoes also what is happening soon in the region with the World Cup coming for the first time. And we think we thought it would be really beautiful and important to have this painting with us here in the Dubai office. And I really invite you to visit our galleries from tomorrow uh, until uh, September 24th. And you see, you will see beautiful highlights of our African Middle Eastern cells and also this beautiful piece by uh, Lowry. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite pieces, and uh, it's it's actually depicting fans going to a Ma to a Manchester City game. Um, but more broadly. You know, apart from bringing wonderful pieces to the region uh, for people to experience um, and to kind of spur interest in, in in arts and culture, we're recently coming off the back of of the pandemic, which has had an impact on on the uh, art scene, um, including, for example, auctions such as Christie's moving online, which is probably um, you know a sign of the of the future in terms of you know global. Uh, customer base, but also technology and and efficiency. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the impact of COVID and of the last few years on how the growth of of arts is going in the region? I mean, I think everyone has to adapt during the period of COVID and after COVID. And online sales have been present before, but we really developed it and invested in it uh, during the time of COVID because it will. It had to be more global and include more people, more collectors, more bidders. Um, and also we are a global company. Christie's is selling all over the world in our office in New York, in London, in Dubai, in Hong Kong. Uh, we have uh, obviously also in Paris and Geneva. We have um, very strong sales. And obviously these sales are not dedicated for collectors and buyers locally. They talk to the world that what has been our tradition for decades. Um, but also this is truly the case while developing the online auctions. And this is something that it take is taking more and more importance, obviously, uh, for many reasons, but also the reason of attracting new collectors, attracting new people to buy. But I would remind you that online sales 
haven't started with the COVID. They were present all over the world, but they obviously helped us to reach more new clients. The region is really, really interesting and fascinating because we had an increase of 12% of new uh, collectors and buyers over the last two years um, after 2019. And half of them are young collectors and young collectors also are more easily um, um, invited or more easily will bid more easily also in the online auction. But for us, we had to adapt during the time of pandemic. Our numbers were very, very good. To give you an example, for the six first months, uh, we realized uh, um, $4.1 billion, which is quite impressive with the venue and the arrival of new collection that has been displayed and sold. But as you mentioned, Today, some people prefer buying online, but we still have the display and we are still touring works and we're still highlighting works in different regions, in New York, in London, in Europe, in Asia, but also here in Dubai. So usually before a sale, uh, in the location of the sale, you can see the artworks like the collectors and very important amateurs or anyone, any visitors can come to Christie's, see the artworks, appreciate visually the artworks. We know that a lot of people prefer to buy directly online without sometimes even seeing the artworks, but they are invited anytime to come to see these artworks and we welcome them in all our offices around the world. And when we have beautiful highlights also, we are very proud to tour them around the world to give the possibility and the access to collectors, visitors, buyers, or just curious people to come and see it. I mean, for more, more than a decade, Christie's has had a, a very significant role in growing contemporary Arab and Middle Eastern art um, and, and growing interest in that and, and helping to increase prices achieved. What, what's the outlook for Arab and Middle Eastern contemporary art over the next few years? I would say yes. Uh, so as you reminded it, we've been present in the region since 2005. We held our first important auctions in 2007 here. Uh, we contribute to the knowledge and the visibility of so many artists. Uh, and among them, obviously, artists from the Arab world, from Iran, from Turkey, from really a rich variety and diversity of this region, also from North Africa. And obviously when we started the auctions in 2007, promoting these artists, these arts, artists of the region started having a very important visibility in the region, but also globally. We include them not only in the sales, local sales, but also we include them or sets dedicated to modern and contemporary Middle Eastern art, but we include them also in sales sometimes in London, we include them in sales in New York, we give them like a platform a visibility for different kinds of collectors to buy them. Over the last years, I would say, especially after the, um, the, the COVID uh, period, I would say there is also a will of more visibility and inclusion of artists of different regions that are not usually visible in different institutions, especially institutions in Europe that are creating more and more boards to collect art from the region, also in museums in America. And this is a very important boost, I think, a very important push for the artists of the region that are displayed and seen in museums. Uh, I will give you an example. You go today to the MoMA and you can see so many different artists from Morocco, from North Africa, from the Middle East, uh, Kemele Ibrahim Ishaq from Sudan has an amazing and beautiful painting displayed in the galleries of the MoMA. And I think all these museums are reflecting also its changing taste and an awareness of the art of the region. I think Christie's has been a leader in the market for a long time and one of the first auction house organizing this very important sales for many years where we saw incredible collections, incredible artworks by Mahmoud Saeed, by Shewet Selim, by very important names. And I think the auction house had also a very important role in promoting these artists. I will give you an example, for instance, um, my colleague uh, Didier Valéry, uh, published with Dr. Rashwan, uh, the first monograph, an important monograph made on an Arab artist, uh, Mahmoud Saeed, the famous uh, Egyptian uh, painter. We sold, I think, a painting for almost $3 million here in our cells. Uh, that shows you also the role, but also the responsibility of the auction houses about the art of the region. I think maybe that was the case before, but I still think uh, today because we are lacking some parts of the artistic panorama in studying and creating a narrative in, in also highlighting the work, uh, showcasing and highlighting the works of the artists of the region. 
the auction houses had traditionally a very important role in this region, more important than other regions, obviously. And I think it's not only uh, um, it's not only a role, but a very important responsibility because we need to understand what we are selling and we need to, to sell also the best artworks. And this is a responsibility that we have. And I'm sure in the next, not only few years, but in the next decade, the art of the region will be more and more important. And not only of the region, I think generally from the global south, but obviously the region is extremely important. And that's why our office is here in Dubai, in the UAE, in the region, to show also how much this region is important for Christie's. So, Rida, you, you have a PhD in uh, North African Roman architecture from the Sorbonne. Um, you're also an author. Uh, you're a curator yourself. You understand this subject. And we've been talking about art. We've been talking about the art scene, auctions, the business and everything. But just in general, why, why does art and culture for the Middle East, North Africa matter? I mean, I would say, to be honest with you, it matters because we matter, our history matter, our art is, is, uh, matters. Uh, the art of the region reflects the history of the region. You were mentioning the Lowry, which we decided to do uh, this podcast in front of this picture. These pictures represent England in 1953. It's not only a part of history, it's also a part of British identity, English identity, and this is very important. So when we promote and write about the art of the region, what is important is not only an aesthetic taste, uh, an artistic taste. It's also who we are. Paintings represented and expressed also very important political moments represented also uh, more, I would say, more, not only political moments, but it also represented moments of our lives, our lives in this region, in region very diverse, very complex, that included so many, so many artists with different backgrounds representing what they were living or what they are living. We have here, for instance, uh, in this, uh, uh, in our gallery in Dubai, we have Ibrahim Salahi, a Sudanese artist. We have Haif Karaman, uh, Iraqi artist based uh, in the US. We have Mournir Farman Farmayan, an Iranian artist, Dana Wartani, uh, a Palestinian Saudi artist. We have all these artists that are expressing what they are seeing and they are expressing their identity. So working on this identity, working on this narrative, working on these artworks and promoting them, showcasing them, because we want also our collectors to have the best, but also we want them to have the best knowing what they are acquiring, who they are acquiring, what an artwork represents in the career of the artist is very, very important. And for us, the art of the region is important because we are important. And it had always been the case uh, when I was studying somehow, when I was writing, when I was looking at the art of the region, but also while working here at Christie's. And I think I have, I've been hired and I'm having this position because I think my company understands also the vision that I have of the art of the region and they want to highlight it also. So maybe more practically, uh, if I'm a, a young investor, if I'm 20 years younger than I am now. First, you can start now. If, if, so how, you know, we think about NFTs, we think about fractional ownership, we think about the art world at the moment. What's the best way to thoughtfully start off collecting art right now? I don't know why you're saying like 20 years ago. I think you can still come. We can still have a discussion. And I can definitely advise you. There is no age. You can be 15, 16, 17 to 100 years old, and you can still be collecting. Um, I would say there isn't a real discussion. I mean, there isn't a... Uh, a generic discussion. I think the discussion starts with what you like, what is your taste, what you want to see in art, what you want the art to reflect on you. Obviously, you can be someone saying like, I would like to invest money and I would like to find my investment in five, 10 years. But you can be also someone telling me I'm coming from this place. This is my background. When I see art, when I see pictures, when I see something, it reflects uh, feeling, it reflects an identity, it reflects an idea on me, and I like this artist, I like this expression, I like this material, I like this color. So the first conversation would be, I know that a lot of people when it deals with auction houses, artwork, obviously when you sell an artwork as we did this year of $195 million of Marine Monroe, everyone gets stuck and fixes the numbers. But at the end of the day, I think what we would do in an auction house is asking you what do you like, what do you want, and how we can advise you 
uh, the best way possible. And it doesn't deal, obviously, always with numbers, but it, it deals also of a collection is an expression of you who you are and what do you want. And this is the conversation we will have before starting speaking about numbers and $100 million or $10,000 or even $1,000. I think this is where the conversation is. And to that, I can tell you who's the new, young, uh, very hot Middle Eastern artist who's the one that I think or I see as extremely interesting to follow in the next years. Or I can tell you, uh, for example, I mentioned Ibrahim Salahi. This is Ibrahim Salahi. And you can't find probably better or the other Hazawi uh, who's also displayed today in our gallery. This is the best art you can see from the region, from the modern or even the contemporary period. And you should invest there because this is the best of the best. So it depends who you are. And it is also, again, with your identity. Uh, Dr. Rida Mumni from Christie's, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your invitation. And uh, you're most than welcome anytime. And you can visit our galleries here in DIFC at any time. You will see beautiful modern Middle Eastern art. Yes, absolutely. I'll, t I'll take you up on that offer. Thank you. Well, that's all we've got time for today. All that remains to thank our production team and you all for being with us. Do join us again next time.